Hi everyone, so the next part of the project will be the Uger Folktale, The Clever Young Man, uh, translated by a lip of the Kashgar Caravan Travel Agency and modified by Watch to Donate. It's actually quite a bit of text, so I thought I might as well just narrate this part for y'all. Um, that way it's a bit easier for you. Um, if you don't want to listen to my voice, you can also lower this. Just be careful to not lower it past half volume, otherwise it might not count. I'm not too sure, but that's what people have told me, so let's just go with that. Anyways, let's get started with the narration. Far long ago, there was a nameless city far away on the other side of the Taklamakan Desert. This city was ruled justly and wisely by a king, and under him everyone knew peace and prosperity. Travelers from all around the world, from Egypt, Rome, India, and Bukhara, hailed this city as a paradise. In the city was a wise old sage who was a close advisor of the king. Not only did he give beneficial advice, but he also had trained many in the king's government in the way of the economy, justice, and peace. Now the king had a premier, who was jealous of the wise sage, and who longed to be king in his own right. One day, he bribed the head chef to put poison in the king's dinner. In due course, the king died, and by a series of cunning strategies, the premier was declared king of all the land. The first thing he did was to exile the sage to the countryside, then he banished all the king's loyal ministers, and put his own evil followers in their place. Before long, the fertile lands of the kingdom became covered with sand and famine, and injustice abounded throughout the land. And then a new disaster struck. Each time the west wind blew, a girl from the city would vanish without a trace. A terrible ogre lived in the Kulia cap, a deep abyss ten days travel from the city. This ogre had long wished to cause mischief, but had dared not while the wise king was alive. Knowing that the new king was weak, he took his opportunity. He would use his magic wind to plunder the kingdom of its girl. One day, the king's own daughter was taken by the ogre. Helpless in his grief, he announced in front of all his people that he would give his throne to the person who destroyed the ogre and brought his daughter back alive. Many brave men traveled to the Cleocap and attempted to rescue her, but all were turned into stone. And visitors no longer came into the city, and the population of the city grew smaller, and things were very grim. Finally, the sage, who was still living in exile, spoke to one of his most promising students, one called Batur, and told him, My son, our nation was a paradise and is now turned into mystery. Rescue the stolen girls and free the people from this reign of terror. And he gave Batur words of advice, telling him to use his wisdom and everything he'd been taught. But he prayed for Batur to succeed as well. After saying goodbye to his master, Batur set off on his journey. While he was going through a bog, he saw a toad. Thinking it might be useful, he put it in his bosom. He came to a desert and saw the tail of a donkey. Thinking it might be useful, he put it in his bosom. He passed through a forest and saw a nest of skylarks high in a tree. Climbing the tree, he captured the skylark along with several eggs and put them in his bosom. After ten days of travel, he arrived at the edge of the Cleocap. When he looked inside the abyss, and saw the countless men turned into stone, he became afraid. But remembering the words of his master, he stirred himself, took heart, and began the long descent. Finally, he arrived at the home of the ogre and saw lots of girls sitting sadly in cages. When they saw him, they cried out, Sir, leave this place, the ogre sleeps, but when he wakes up, he will surely turn you into stone. But Batur had been thinking, he said to the girls, Please don't worry, I'm here to destroy the ogre and save you from him. When he wakes, say that Batur has come to challenge him. I will meet him in front of the abyss. And having said this to the girls, he went out to make certain preparations. Sure enough, when the ogre awoke, he emerged from the abyss with a horrifying noise. Seeing Batur, he shouted, You puny human being, how you dare come to my land without fearing me. I now turn you to stone. But Batur loftily declared, Frightened of you? Would I have climbed down to your home if I were frightened of you? I need the heads of ten ogres. It is a pity you are alone, because I'm really just worried about where to find the other nine. On hearing this, the ogre was rather shocked, and his hair stood on end. 
but in order to not show his fear, he laughed and said, Well, don't imagine cutting off my head. A louse from my body could kill you with one bite. And he took a louse from his armpit, big as a walnut, and dropped it in front of the tour. The tour said proudly, My louse can eat up yours, and dropped the toad from his bosom. Now, the toad was so hungry for having not eaten for ten days that he swallowed the ogre's louse in one bite. Seeing this, the ogre panicked. He threatened, I'll bind you with the hair from my armpit. You won't be able to move. He took a hair as long as the snake from his armpit and showed it to Batur. But unconcernedly shaking his head, Batur dropped the tail of the donkey from his bosom in front of the ogre, saying, If I make a net from this, it's you who will not be able to move again. At this, the ogre severely started to worry. If I throw you to the sky like I throw the stone, you'll fall to the ground after three days, and then you'll be crushed and turned into powder, he blustered. He threw a stone into the sky, and sure enough, it took three days to fall back to the ground. But Petur laughed, and if I throw you to the sky as I throw the stone, you will never come back down. He bowed to the ground as if to pick up a stone, but instead he secretly took the skylark from his bosom and threw it up into the air. After doing a quick somersault, the bird disappeared and was never seen again. The ogre was terror-stricken at this point, but tried one last time. If I press you with my fingers as I press the stone, you will be crushed to powder. But Tua approached the ogre and said, But if I press you as I press this stone, instead of turning into powder, you will be turned to oil. And as he pressed the egg that had been hidden in his bosom, yellow and white liquid started to leak from his fingers. After this, the ogre frankly thought he was going to have a heart attack from fear, and said, Obviously, you are much more powerful than me. If you let me live, you can have the key to the cage in which the girls are imprisoned and the key to my magic box. And saying this, he gave Batur the two keys and fled. Batur descended the abyss and immediately freed the girls. When he opened the magic box, an ugly bird raised its head from inside and chirped unpleasantly. At that moment, a strong wind began to howl inside the Koya cat. But as Batur closed the box, the wind stopped. The tour made a fire and burned the box, and at that moment all the people that had been turned to stone came back to life, and they all thanked the tour and began the journey with him back to the city. But the story does not end there. As the ogre was running for his life, he came across a fox. Seeing the pitiful condition the ogre was in, the fox said, Friend ogre, what on earth has happened to you? Well, dear fox, I'm escaping for my life from someone called the tour, said the ogre in reply. The fox laughed sneeringly. Friend Ogre, you are escaping from nothing. There is no human being equal to you. He frightens you with his tricks. Come on, I'll go with you. We'll get your keys from him and take your revenge. Hmm, said the ogre, somewhat hesitantly. You are an extremely crafty fellow. You're not thinking of bringing me to my doom while escaping with your life, are you? I won't rise to this bait of yours. The fox replied, then tie me to you. After tying up the fox to him with a stout piece of rope, the ogre turned around and went to look for Batur, who they found leading the group of men and women through the desert. Seeing them come towards him, Batur had a crafty thought and shouted, Hey, you fox, I told you to get me ten ogres, and you come here with only one? How about I make a hat from your fur for baking your promise? On seeing this, the ogre turned and ran for his life, while the fox, tied as he was to the ogre, was beaten from stone to stone. On arriving at a safe place, the ogre stopped to rest. As he turned around, he caught sight of the fox, whose mouth was hanging open, and it seemed that he was laughing at the ogre. Seeing this, he became angry and shouted, You devious fox! You dare laugh at me? And so he started running again. Meanwhile, Batur arrived in the city with everyone he had freed from the ogre, including the king's daughter. The people welcomed them home with great rejoicing, and the dishonest king was forced to give up his throne to Batur as he had promised. To the sounds of drums and flutes, Batur was placed on the throne. However, Batur summoned his exiled teacher and asked him to be the king of the country. The wise sage refused the honor, but agreed instead to be his chief advisor. After that, with the acumen of Batur and his wise teacher at his side, the kingdom returned to its prosperous, peaceful, and happy ways. And according to the sayings of the people, 
the ogre is still at large and running with that fox around his neck. Thank you all for listening, and I apologize for mispronouncing some of the names. Uh, I think the tour might be pronounced Bader, but I'm not entirely sure. But I hope you still enjoy the story. And next up, we have the Uyghur Artist Exhibition. I would like to thank all of the artists that have allowed me to use their work in this video, and I hope you enjoy.
呢，她穿又漂亮。You the right here now. For my love, we gonna start a new one. Shell me out. Du bist so süß, bin da von mir. Dass ich dich kriege, ist für mich nur fair. Willst du nur mich oder ist er noch wer? Willst du nur mich oder ist er noch wer? Yeah. Tell me, baby, baby. Do you love me? Do you love me? Oi, 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 nian mai asho erak boida. Kech kundus kat mai asho güzel ay nong norda. Güzel jamalong map tong kaldi me. Bakasang ola azab çekip yalnız kaldım meğer soğuk dünyada Okştartım ben seni ayga yar dedin beni okşay sen layga Hem de bilmedim cevap kayda Dert vremden hem seni tektim yarga Artık yapma kılmağına beşim dağın bak Seni kuaklardı bol diş ara bemra Hem de ettim bana yanımda kim bak Kaytıp gelsen konucaydı davamlık ben bak Oyun 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 yanma yaşı erik boyda Keç gündüz katma yaşı güzel ayının nurda Güzel camalın maptun kıldı meni bakka sağla Azap çekip yalnız kaldım meğer soğuk dünyada Oyun 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 yanma yaşı erik boyda Keç gündüz katma yaşı güzel ayının nurda Güzel camalın maptun kıldı meni bakka sağla Azap çekip yalnız kaldım meğer soğuk dünyada Dünyada Ich hatte 